So guys, the biggest problem I've had with the EQS is the design. But now, as you can see here, they've made strides to making that a bit better. This is the model year update 2024 for the new EQS. And this new front end is just the start of some of the changes that they've made, including increased range, making this an even bigger range monster of 800 plus kilometers. Let's talk about what they've changed. Customers like you and me want more traditional looking Mercedes-Benz. And this little update to the EQS is a sign that Mercedes are starting to accede to that request. But it's not just this face change of the car to a more traditional style. They've also made some big changes under the skin, not just for this, but across the EQ range. But with this car particularly, it gains a massive range of over 800 kilometers and some changes to the inside to make sitting in the back a lot more comfortable. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through all of those changes, including the design, what they've done under the skin, and then we'll jump in the back as well. So let's check out this model year change to the new EQS. So guys, today's episode of RBR is once again sponsored by NordVPN. We've spoken about Nord many times in the past. They're a long-term channel sponsor about how you can gain more content from across the world on streaming services, protect yourself from your data being stolen when you're out and about. But one thing I want to talk about today is different. It's using the internet safely without even having the VPN turned on. Because don't you hate how using the internet has just become a worse experience over the years? You get these stupid ads and video ads that just play as soon as you get on a website. You've got malicious sites. You've got, you can't shop for something without the website tracking your habits and the things you're shopping and then throwing more stuff at you later. It's really frustrating. Nord want the internet to be the way it used to be, or at least allow us to use it the way we used to use it. And to help us do that, they've got this thing now called threat protection. It's within the NordVPN app itself. All you do, you go into the app. You don't need to turn on the VPN if you don't want to. You hit this shield button here, and then you've got threat protection, knock it on, and that is it. It can be turned on independently of your VPN. So this will then stop those annoying ads from playing. It'll stop the websites from tracking you and making a profile about you so they've got your data. It will even scan downloaded files like an antivirus and make sure that they're safe before you open them. And of course the basics, it'll protect you from malicious URLs and websites. And not all of us use VPNs all the time. We don't keep them on all the time. So it's great that you can have that as a separate feature and let your internet browsing be just a a better, more peaceful experience. And of course, then when you pair it with the VPN, you've got the ultimate protection against anyone trying to get your data and staying safe online. And of course, as an RBR viewer, you get a great deal as well. Use my link, nordvpn.com forward slash RBR. You'll get a two year plan with an extra four months free. That's nordvpn.com forward slash RBR. And remember 30 day Nord money back guarantee. If you change your mind, it's completely risk free. So huge thanks to Nord for supporting the channel and to you guys for supporting our sponsors. Let's get back to the car. So guys, back in September 21, I drove the EQS back in the UK. And you guys know I've been very vocal about the fact that I don't like the design of these cars, right? I've talked about soap bars and the whole thing many, many times. So I rendered what I thought could be a better version of the EQS. And what I did was I replaced the standard panel with a more traditional looking Mercedes-Benz grill with a star on the bonnet. And obviously I changed the shape of the car a little, but that was basically what I did. And now, three years later, Let's call Gordon up. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, is um, Gordon, Gordon Wagner there, please? Uh, he can't keep avoiding me. I, I need my royalties. All right, jokes aside, guys. Um, it's nice to have an update on the front. Let's first get a closer look around this. I'll show you around uh, what it looks like from different angles on the front end, how much has it helped, and we can see what we think of the design. So guys, your main change is, of course, the replacement of the standard black panel grille with the star in the center. Instead, we've got this kind of, I think it looks a bit like the um, E-Class grille that we have as the option uh, in the standard version of that car, or in, in fact, there's a higher executive version, and that has this type of grille as well, where you have the typical lines, but they're within the black panel. And it looks okay, it looks okay. It's more than that, that's less important. I think this is more important. We all love the Mercedes badge on the bonnet so much, and you know, we've all looked at it growing up, etc. It's, it's an icon of the industry. And it always should have been on this car, really, shouldn't it? And I think that helps. 
different angles, different shots you can see, you know, where it's kind of really giving this a bit more of a presence. The other thing they've done, now this is the electric art version, which essentially, it used to have a different body, like a non-AMG body, but now they've given it the AMG lower end, or like a lower end that you would have seen on a S-Class with AMG line, and paired that with the classic grille. So it's clever, it's like your standard version or your electric art version actually has the better face, which is good. I think they could have gone further, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I think they could have taken this whole concept a bit further, but this isn't a facelift. It's a model year update, so there's only so far as they've gone. And proof of that is actually in the rear. Whereas you can see, it's literally identical to what it was before because it's not really a facelift. Now, one thing that they have changed, which is quite nice actually, is over here, where we now have an electric charging port that we didn't have before. So what I need to do is push that, and that goes back in. So small updates happening all the time to the EQ families, either over the air or indeed har hardware updates, which is interesting and lots of service plans and other things available. So they're trying to support this ecosystem quite a lot. Now I'm also gonna show you a couple of things on the inside in a minute. Before that, let's finish talking about the design. So as that's your changes to the front end, and as I said, that comes in the electric art version of the car, you still get your standard AMG one with the central star as well if you want it. I think they, they could have gone further with this, right? I just think the grill could have been more grill-like like the way that I rendered it. Uh, I would have loved to have seen some changes to the bonnet, even if it affected um, your range a little bit because you've increased the range quite significantly that we'll talk about in a minute. I would have just loved to see a little bit more going on, but obviously this is not a facelift, it's a model year change. Maybe they can still do that with a facelift. But if you ask for my personal opinion, I think it's a good change for someone looking for a luxury car that's a bit more like S-Class, but I don't think it is enough still for me to like it. Say what you like about BMW's i7, who is the direct competitor, but for better or for worse, it still just looks like a normal combustion 7 series as well. And I think in the future, Mercedes really need to go in this route where the EQS or the electric S-Class is literally just an electric S-Class. Now under the skin, the biggest thing here is range. So significant improvement to the battery. It's got a new cell chemistry and essentially we're going for 108 kilowatt to 118 kilowatt, which gives us in the EQS 450 plus 822 kilometers of range. And don't think this is pie in the sky because when I tested the EQS, it was getting well over 400 back in winter months. So I think this will get to that 500 mile-ish mark quite easily. So that is really good. And I personally liken luxury in electric cars to having as much range as possible. And the EQS, you cannot argue the fact that it is an absolute range monster. We have other updates and these also apply to the other EQ cars in the family. We've got a new heat pump in the car that takes waste energy from the electric drive process and uses that instead to heat the cabin. And that actually saves a significant amount of range. We also have a decoupling unit that decouples the formatic. So we don't, when we don't need our front electric motor, it will decouple it and just use the rear again to make better use of the motors and give you more range when you're looking to do more miles. The other thing they've revised is brake feel because customers were complaining about the way the brakes feel and the pedal moves by itself. So we've got new hardware in there, new braking hardware, and it all feels a bit more natural according to Mercedes, which is nice. And finally, towing capacity has been increased from 750 kg, which was pretty useless, to almost the same as the SUVs now with 1700 kg that you can tow with the EQS and in fact the EQE sedan as well. So that's making it a lot more useful for buyers looking to tow a little bit. Now, what's really interesting to me is the timing of this model year change for EQS. It comes at a time when Mercedes have just announced that their whole turning fully electric by 2030 thing isn't quite working out as they were expecting with combustion car sales being well over 80% still. And now what they're thinking is this whole electric first thing needs to be pulled back a little. And in fact, they're saying that the combustion car is gonna be supported well into the future. So customers making their voices heard loud and clear. Now, I'm not naive and neither are you. This doesn't mean that the EV doesn't have its place in the market. Rather, when it comes to, I think, ultra luxury cars like this or smaller segment urban daily cars, the EV actually does make a lot of sense, particularly with a car like this that goes up to 822 kilometers. This is a range monster that could be really, really useful for a potential owner. Those are your changes under the skin. We also have some changes inside, particularly to rear comfort. 
And this car is actually a special one. It's a manufacturer edition and genuinely it has a gorgeous interior. Let me show you now. So guys, this is actually the edition manufacturer, as I said, so it comes in the metallic black, obviously with the new grille and the AMG line bottom half, which I can actually find some angles that I like on EQS now, which I couldn't before. So even though it's a little change, it certainly does help, I do think. Now I did say that the interior is actually quite lovely in this manufacturer car, and I wasn't kidding. This is a wonderful deep white exclusive leather interior. You've got your typical S-Class pillows with a rose gold Mercedes-Benz crest. More rose gold here. This is actually really nicely done. Really thick Maybach like carpet here and some nice Napa leather piping at the bottom. And you can see the manufacturer selection edition badge there in the middle. You see the more luxurious Maybach style steering wheel here finished in the deep white, which looks amazing. And then the hyper screen, which either you love it or, or you hate it. I'm not a massive fan of it. It does come as standard in all EQS models, including the SUV now with this model year update. So if you like the hyper screen, it is now standard. More than that, I just love the seats and the interior here because it is of course all S-Class derived. The rear is as nicely done. There's actually some changes to the rear seats here where we've got this additional section here, which A, gives you more padding comfort, but it actually just looks better. It looks more like your front seats and you get as you can see, they love their soft pillows at Mercedes-Benz when it comes to luxury, don't they? Just absolutely swear by them. And I like them as well. I like squeezing the pillows. One other technical thing they've added, which we first saw in E-Class, is this active lane assist. I can't show you at the moment. But essentially, the car will change lanes itself without you having to indicate, etc. And that's a new part of the assistant system that they've added within this car as well. Now, there is a significant update. If you want to sit in the back of the car, and have a better ride. There is now a further comfort package where like you get the reclining element in the Maybachs or the S-Class, all I need to do, press this button and now this seat goes all the way forward. We've got an additional foot rest at the bottom as well and you've just got way more space. So you can see I have loads of space here. This is the foot rest element that they've added a few degrees to make it even more comfortable when you're doing longer journeys according to them. There are a few changes like more aluminium and chrome elements like on the back of the seats here to make the whole experience a bit more premium and in fact my seat at the back here reclines a little bit more as well so you can really enjoy a longer drive a bit more so this is nice this is adding to that luxury experience that you expect of something that is using the letter s which is such an important letter at mercedes-benz so guys that's just a model year update on the eqs and a significant one up to 822 miles a much better face on the front end. And I think all of this betrays a change of philosophy at Mercedes. It's nice to see that they're listening. And I think we're gonna to start to see the retirement of that old EQ flavor, hopefully toward a two prong approach of having more traditional looking Mercedes Benz cars in both combustion and electric. That's what I hope this signifies. If you've enjoyed this episode of RBR, as always, please do like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.